All right, 2 million MT. Well, 2.25 million MT to be exact. And yes, absolutely. We're going to show you how we got there and then teach you how you can get there too. Sniping and working the auction house a little. Yeah, work it into your 2K routine. Uh, by the way, I'm Space Word Bird. Welcome to our little YouTube channel. Uh, me and Party Feet, we make my team vids. And this would be video number nine in our little no money spent series here this season. So you want to play the game mode, my team, and play it no money spent. And without spending additional cash on the game, make sure you're checking out all of our videos in this little no money spent series. And watch us play the game and not give 2K our wallets. Uh, there'll be a link to the no money spent playlist at the end of this video, so make sure you go check those videos out. This would be video number nine, which means it's been nine weeks since NBA 2K20's release. I'm pretty good releasing a vid every weekend, keeping that streak running. And today, uh, this weekend's vid, focusing finally on the auction house. We've been busy grinding offline solos. The rewards have been really good. That's why. But today's vid, we're going to show you how to make MT and be able to buy the players you really want in auction versus relying on pack luck or buying VC. Uh, here's a quick look at my current squad. It has evolved into a pretty solid team. Uh, most recent pickups this past week added my 10th diamond token reward card. Yeah, I picked up Diamond Larry Johnson. Uh, picking up this card has now unlocked the pink diamond reward cards. And honestly, none of them look terribly exciting. Uh, that's unfortunate. So as of right now, no real motivation to grind for tokens. Maybe that's why I'm moving my focus to the auction house. And working the auction house is always good fun. Now, the tokens I've gotten so far to get to this point, uh, that is to unlock the pink diamond token reward market. I did not get there by locking in sets for tokens. Now, that would be the worst thing you could do with your MT. No, wait. Uh, actually, ripping packs would be the worst thing you could do with your MT. Locking in MT for sets that reward tokens, it's just not a good idea. Don't do it. Best to rely on the best tokens, and those, of course, are the free tokens, and there's plenty of free tokens out there. Take advantage of it. Grind the three dominations and play triple threat offline. For me right now, at over 500 wins, I've still got 575 tokens waiting to be claimed. Right now, taking a break from triple threat offline. Like I said, no real motivation to go after those pink diamond token reward cards. No, this past week, spent some time in the auction house and picked up an Amethyst Xavier McDaniel in auction. Uh, this would be my third pickup. That's a non-token reward card for the team, if you're keeping track. Uh, last weekend, added Heat Check Giannis and Evolution Terrence Ross. This week, digging this Xavier McDaniel. Yeah, a 40k card in auction for the base Amethyst. Now, the diamond will sell for around 80k, and a fully evolved pink diamond It's a bid-only card. Find it for 100k buy now, that's definitely a snipe. I paid a little more for mine because mine was equipped with a diamond contract and a diamond shoe. The contract is worth 30 to 35k in auction, and this particular diamond Nike sells for around the same amount. Now, auction house fun. Uh, first, let's share a couple of Party Pete's snipes. We posted these on Twitter, and by the way, here's where you can find us on Twitter. Make sure you give us a follow. Party Pete sniped a pink diamond Wilt and Walton, both for 100k buy now. Now, Wilt, he flipped for 205, and uh, Walton, he flipped for 190. Now, while these snipes are sexy, this is not how I go about making my MT. Now, today's vid, uh, my method and my simple rules. Let's go over them. First rule is to never buy packs with your MT. Yeah, pack odds are terrible. You will burn through hundreds of thousands of MT and pull absolutely nothing. And ignore social media, especially content creators that do pack openings that claim packs are fire or juiced. Now, for the record, packs are never fire and are always the opposite of juiced. Don't buy in. Uh, second rule, and it takes a little effort, and that's to keep your collection tight. Meaning, if you don't have a purpose for a card in your collection, sell it. Everything has value. Now, while collection rewards are good, for example, at a thousand cards, you get a diamond Eddie Jones. 1250, you get 200 tokens. Uh, 1500, you get an Evolution Jameson. 1750, I think you get like 300 tokens. And for over 2,000 cards collected, you get some insane rewards. The rewards are for the community that's spending hundreds, some thousands of dollars on the game. Now, me always sniping and flipping cards, I'll make a lot of MT. And I have played that collection rewards game. Did that back in 2K17. And collecting over 2,000 cards, let me tell you, it was not fun. Uh, so, me, if that's your game, I don't judge. That's what makes you happy, throwing $100 bills at every new promo. Uh, go for it. Definitely keeps the auction house interesting for us. Uh, the sniping community. So, thank you. Uh, you want in? Join the sniping community. Uh, spend some time in the auction house. This is rule number three. Uh, it does take some stamina. You need to start with learning the value of cards. Watch what they're getting posted for. Those cards will show up with end auction times of 4, 12, and 24 hours. Those are the newest cards posted. And go back and watch what the cards are selling for when you look up those cards later in auction. Now, keeping your collection tight will help you get started learning the value of player cards, collectibles, and consumables in auction. You want to get to a level where you can very quickly know what is a good price to buy and flip a card for. That's what we're going to do in today's vid. Stick around because rule number four is to find a good snipe filter and that's what we're going to share with you today. Yesterday I spent a little time sniping and flipping premium evolution cards. Of course I created the spreadsheet because well that's what I do. The spreadsheet lists all the premium evolution cards and what they're selling for in auction this weekend but instead of using a search auctions feature what I did was look up the cards for my collection page. Doing this I could hop around quickly and look at the different evolution cards without having to mess around with setting up a filter or camping on a specific one yeah, or having to reset it with every new card I'd have to look up. This was super fast and convenient. Then was able to get into a little rhythm and flip quite a few cards yesterday. The cards I had the most success finding and flipping. That's what we're going to go through. Premium evolution cards is what we were looking at. Start
Mark of the Weight Spotlights. We'll check on Udonis Haslam. Uh, the Ruby has the most value. will sell for around 15 to 16K. Uh, the Emerald and Sapphire will sell for around 12 to 14. Legacy Series 1. We'll look at Dave Bing. This is like a 40K uh, diamond. Uh, the Pink Diamond I've yet to see for a buy now. Uh, only because there's no demand, I think, for this card. Not many people out there grinding diamond Dave Bings to flip it as a pink diamond. Uh, Xavier McDaniel, on the other hand, has a ton of value. Uh, the Amethyst sells for around 45 to 50K. Uh, the Diamond for around 80 to 100. The Pink Diamond is definitely a bed. In fact, when this card was first released, uh, the community was throwing a half million MT at this card, the Pink Diamond. My initial impression of this card, I'm liking it a lot. And my card, like that it's got a diamond contract and a uh, diamond Nike. Planning on grinding those evolution stats for it. Now, also, uh, in the Legacy Series 1 set, looking at Amethyst Brian Reeves. I've yet to see an evolved uh, diamond big country. Now, the Amethyst, though, I have flipped for 18 to 20K. Doesn't sell as quick, but it will sell within the day. Uh, Junior Bridgman, I'll usually skip over. Not a lot of demand for this card. Uh, the uh, Amethyst Evolution card, you can find for around 12 to 14K. Uh, the Evolved Diamond sells for around 40. Uh, Ruby Rick Smith, I've had some luck finding uh, it for under 10K. Uh, it sells pretty quick for 13 to 15K. Uh, Amethyst Rick Smith is a 25 to 30K card. Now, not an Evolution card, uh, but in this Legacy Series 1 set, and I've had some success sniping and flipping it, is that Ruby Luke Walton. Sell this card pretty easy for 6 to 7K. Moving on to the multi-dimensional set. Don't really spend a lot of time looking at this set. Now, have a check. Is a, a, the Amethyst is like an 80K card. Uh, I have seen the Diamond for buy now. When this card was first released, this card had a ton of value. Uh, now, not so much because there's better cards out there. Uh, Charlie Ward is an Emerald and Sapphire that's pretty easy to find for 2,000 to 2,500 MT. Uh, the fully evolved Ruby doesn't have a ton of value. You can find it for around three to 4,000 coins. Daryl Armstrong, another Evo with not a ton of value. Uh, Sapphire you can find for under 2,000 coins. And a fully evolved Amethyst is around like a 13 to 15K card. KG Spotlight Set. Uh, Stefan Marbury has value. And the base Emerald starts at around 6,000 coins. We've had some success sniping and flipping the lower tier Stefan Marbury cards. Uh, the Amethyst is a 20K card. It's pretty well. I just kind of skip over. Not a ton of value. Uh, the Diamond, though, is around a 30 to 35K card. Now, Prime VIP, I'm always looking at Evolution Terrence Ross. I absolutely love this card. A great budget card to have in your lineup. Uh, the Ruby sells for 13 to 15K easy. Uh, low tier Amethyst will sell for around 30. Uh, the Diamond will see occasionally for 100K by now. Uh, that is not a snipe because I see a lot of the bid Diamonds uh, only sell for 100K. Uh, this Amethyst Bruce Bone is new and it's an intriguing card. This weekend, I've seen some evolved diamonds go up in auction and selling for around 200K. Uh, the Amethyst right now you can find for 15 to 17K. That fully evolved diamond looks nice with Hall of Fame Quick Draw, Corner, Trapper, Tireless Defender, Off Ball Pest, Lightning Reflexes, Clamps, and Defensive Leader. I kind of want this card, keeping an eye on it. Uh, Spotlight Clyde set, you got Paxson, Kersey, uh, both Emerald, Sapphire, and Ruby cards. Don't have a ton of value, sell for around 5,000 coins. Uh, their Amethyst is worth 25 to 30. There are two diamond tiers for uh, Jerome Kersey. Uh, the 93 overall, we'll see every once in a while for 100K by now. 95 overall is always a bid, but neither sell for much more than 100K. Evolution Kenny Smith, uh, the Ruby, I skip over. It's like a 4 to 5K card. And the Amethyst, another 25K card that I don't feel there's a ton of demand for. Uh, Spotlight Dirk set, I don't really look at Evolution Devin Harris. It's not a bad card, just not a lot of demand for it. Steve Nash, though, having some luck finding this card and flipping it. The Emerald will sell for 10 to 12K. Funny, though, because you can find an evolved Amethyst usually for around 20K. The Diamond, a fully evolved Steve Nash, sells for around 50 to 60K. Finley is another card I've had some decent luck uh, sniping and flipping. Yeah, the Emerald, you can quickly evolve to a Sapphire for just scoring 20 with it. Get that done quick. Need a game of Triple Threat offline. And the Sapphire have sold pretty easy for 10 to 12,000 coins. New Lights Out set. Steve Kerr, the Emerald, will sell for around 6,000 coins. Now, the Diamond is 100K by now. Doesn't sell quickly, but it will sell. Ruby Catino Mobley, uh, an interesting card. Starts at 3,000 coins. So if I'm finding it for under 2,000 coins, I'm buying it to flip. It's all about keeping your auction house full. And that Amethyst looks interesting. Can find it for 20 to 30K in auction. Has four Hall of Fame badges, including Range Extender. But again, Rim running the meta. Shooting broken this year. That explains why the card is so cheap. Now, Sapphire Rafe LaFrance, I flipped for a few times for four to 5,000 coins. Not giving this card a lot of attention. Uh, Moments Week 1 set, Josh and Kendrick Nunn, great budget cards. Flipping them, there's some value there, just not a lot. It's a lower profit margin, so I don't spend a lot of time looking at these. And uh, the new Legacy Series 2, uh, Bob Love and Chuck Person. Love, the diamond sells for around 45 to 50K. Rare to see this card evolved as a pink diamond, uh, but did watch one sell this weekend for 150K. Uh, Amethyst Chuck Person is a 12 to 14K card, and the evolved diamond sells for around 50 to 60. And that is it. Now, I've included a link to the spreadsheet in the video description below. Use it. Uh, hopefully, I'll help you out. Help me get my head around the cards, uh, their pricing, and then get into a little rhythm of making my rounds and checking on these cards and their current pricing. And find some snipes, flip the cards, make a profit. It's all about keeping your auction house full and finding cards with good profit margin. All these evolution cards have that. Now, am I sitting on the auction house all day, every day? No. But if I've got some time to play some 2K, absolutely, I'm looking at the auction house. We'll work it in after a game. Come back and check on cards. Maybe throw some bids on some cards. And go back to just playing the game because that's what it's all about. Now, that's all we've got for you today. Uh, likes, we really appreciate them. Hit that like button, please. Uh, says yes, Space and Pete. Keep making more YouTube videos this season. Make sure your notifications are on. We appreciate that when you're checking out our vid right away. Uh, and subscribe so you're ready to check out that next vid too. Still a ton of
of my team season left. So for Party Pete, this is space, playing the game mode, no money spent, and working the auction house. We're out.